lot about Thomas Roblox games. These videos are simple. I just review a game and talk about what I like and what I dislike, and then on to the next game. This is the seventh, technically eighth one of these videos I have done. So for this video, why don't I change things up? I'll be reviewing these games, but I'll be paying great attention to the buildings. Whatever game has the best building will get my building stamp of approval. But before we start, I want to address something from the previous video, and that's when I covered Soda Online. I said that I didn't really care when covering speedy skip games, and I just want to clarify that I don't care in the sense of letting a bad creator stop me from covering a game. I don't like a lot of Thomas Roblox creators, and I don't want any victims to feel like I'm ignoring them or what they had to go through. I just want to talk about some games that I know people want to hear me talk about. Just to clarify, this isn't me supporting the creator's actions, it's just me playing the game. Uh, Alright, with that clarified, let's get into the video. The last time I played this game, the buildings were a huge complaint for me. They were so basic and lifeless. Well, it has been a year, and a lot can change in that time, including the entirety of this game. My main complaint last time was that the buildings were low detail, and if the buildings got the same amount of care the engines did, it would just look great. And I think my feedback was heard because this game is now beautiful. It has improved so much with the sets and the terrain while still having the same layout. It went from being this huge map that was mostly empty to being a huge map with a good amount of detail. I seriously love the engine's art style, and now since the buildings can match this, I think that the game feels more like a world and less like a video game. If I were to nitpick the buildings, I would complain about how a lot of them just don't have doorknobs, some doors are impossible to get into, and some buildings are just floating. Super freaking magical. These seem like minor things that were overlooked, and keeping in mind none of these games appeal are the buildings. I really love the work that's been done. The stations in these games should be the best building you can have in a game. They are the building the player interacts with the most, and I think this game still doesn't disappoint. In fact, it's like way better than I expected. Shout out to the oil tinkers behind the sheds. They're looking great and have a really nice texture. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have to say about the buildings. They aren't like perfect, but they work really well with the game's style, and honestly, that's all I could have ever asked for. It's a good day for me when I get to talk about an Isle of Freeham game. Now Isle of Freeham's first game had ended, which made me a little bit disappointed, but they now have a new game, and while it, there isn't as much content as the previous game, this one is just so much better. The engines return, and the buildings are so freaking good. They added so much to the game going down the line. They serve their purpose of being great to look at while driving, but if you decide to go to them, you'll get to see a town with clothes drying, and buildings having names, and little shop centers. It feels so lived in, and I really love it. My only complaint about the buildings would be this one uh, door being in the ground a little too much, but that's all I really noticed. The station is great, and I love the added ticket boot. When it comes to these games, I've only really talked about how good these games are, and um, to that I say, yeah, I just really enjoy these games a lot, and I find them fun and can easily overlook little flaws that they have. I, I don't really know what to complain about with these games. They've just been really well made. Maybe engine strength hasn't always been the best in the games, but this game is beautiful, and I recommend that you play it. Soda Playland at first might seem like another game that would have bad buildings, but it's surprisingly really nice. Its style is very toy-like, but don't discredit it because its buildings fit the style of the game really well. I loved the curve outline for the buildings, and they are mostly simplistic, but the engines also are as well, so I feel like it fits the style. I really love how the cranes move in this game, they're just so freaking cool. The scenery is pretty decent, I think the floor texture works for me and then also doesn't at the same exact time. It's so weird! but also kind of nice. I don't get why. When it comes to the complaints about the buildings, it's the backs of them. It feels a little generic at times. Also, this isn't the game's fault, but I feel like I'm getting tired of most Thomas Roblox games being really simplistic with their detail. But that's really just a me thing, and I find this game more enjoyable than most simplistic games. So did Playland, while not having the best buildings ever, I feel that they fit the game style pretty well. <laughs> Colorful Engines, as a game, doesn't have too much to it just yet. 
it's still a work in progress, and in terms of track to go down, you don't have many options. But I see this game will become something really fun once there's more to do in it. Like the GUI is great, and the engine models are really unique. So with this in mind, do the buildings match with the engines? Honestly, yeah, I think they do. They aren't super detailed in comparison to the engines, but I think they work well with them. The building models are all nice, and they aren't that bland either. It's a nice balance of being easy to make and looking good with the engines. Now, I do think the buildings are lacking a little bit, and that's mainly because of the name of the game. It's called Colorful Engines, and the engines are colorful, they are darker shades. I think that the buildings could contrast with this better with some brighter colors to make the environment truly lower to the name of the game, because having engines with more darker color palettes isn't really well contrasted with the name of the game being Colorful Engines, so I feel with the buildings they could really make up for the name of the game and really live up to the title. Interestingly enough, I think that Sutter Playland is doing a similar thing to Colorful Engines when it comes to the buildings. They aren't a big focus, but they still look good. Colorful Engines has buildings that work with the game, and honestly, I really like that. Blue Trailer Friends Exploring Sodor went through a lot since I last talked about it. A lot of stuff came out about the developers and moderators and a lot of bad things that they did. And since this game got its missions feature removed, which was like th the best part of the game, and now we're just left with this game as it is, um, yeah, it, it low-key kind of feels like a shell of its former self. But luckily for this review, a lot of the buildings are still here, so I get to freaking judge them again. If you know my history with this game and the buildings, you probably know how I will feel about them in advance, but I think it's safe for me to say that I just really freaking hate the way the Blue Trader Friends buildings look. A lot of the time, the glass is just the same texture as the building. They choose colors that don't contrast well with each other, and a lot of textures don't work with the buildings. But it's a shame because the geometry of these buildings are good. They could use some doorknobs, but besides that, I like the way they are. But in terms of everything else about them, yeah, they are just so unflattering to look at, and not a single building makes me really appreciate the work put into them. Which is a shame because, like I said, I really do love the geometry of it. This game has always had a hard time with its color choices, and they have improved a lot over time, but even now, they still aren't that nice looking. But Blue Shine Friends has always been a lower detailed game, and while I enjoy the engine models a lot, I think they are nice besides some color choices of course, but when it comes to the buildings, which fit in with the style well, I just find them super boring and bland. They don't ruin the game for me, but they surely don't enhance it, and I could probably go on forever on each building talking about why I don't like it, uh, but I won't because that's mean. This game is pretty different in comparison to most Thomas Robux games. You get to play in a park, and you get to go on so many fun rides. Because of this, the buildings are pretty complex, and have a lot of nice detail onto them. Seeing how the buildings are a big part of the game, I appreciate how they feel well made. While I find this game to be a little bit boring visually at times, I think as a park game, these buildings are what you should expect them to be. Now if I were to compare these engine models to the buildings, do they fit in? Yeah, they do. I like all the control you can have with the rides. If you got like 20 people in this game, I can see it being a really fun time to just mess around with these rides, drive an engine, and explore what you can in this game. The buildings are really pretty good in this game, and I find it decently fun. So now is the time I rank the games I've covered for this video and show which one of them will have my building stamp of approval. Coming in dead last, to no one's surprise, is Blue Trailer Friends. I am sure I've upset many people, but I just don't like them. In fifth place, we have Colorful Engine. While they fit in the game style well, I just don't feel inspired by them. In fourth place is Sodor Playland. I really like the toy style they have in the game, but I just don't think it's my thing in general. In third place, we have Hannibal Railway Museum. They are really complex and work really well, but it's kind of a little boring because I am just not that interested in this game, which leads me to not really care too much about the buildings. Now, for second place, we have the Industrious Railway. While some buildings aren't updated just yet, for the new ones that they have, they are so nice and finally match the engines. And in first place, to nobody's surprise, is the Isle of Freeham Railway Get Back. 
They fit the environment extremely well and are beautiful. If you want a game with loads of care put into it, you gotta go check this out, even though there's not that much content right now. Alright, that's it for the silly buildings ranking. I felt that these were getting a little bit boring, so for the next one of these, maybe I can make it a little more interesting like this one. Subscribe for a new video, turn on the notifications, cause uh, if you miss another one of my videos, I will find you and force you to watch them. Alright, bye everyone! Thank you.